What does it mean to be truly rich? Is it about the digits in your bank account or is it something more profound? Welcome to the Stoic's Guide to Understanding the True Meaning of Wealth. Sit back and journey with us as we explore the wisdom of ancient philosophers who taught us that true wealth is not about the accumulation of material possessions, but rather, it's about the cultivation of virtue, reason, and tranquility. Marcus Aurelius, a Roman emperor and a Stoic philosopher, once said, very little is needed to make a happy life. These words hold a profound truth. They suggest that the pursuit of wealth for its own sake can lead to a life of stress and dissatisfaction. Instead, he encourages us to find richness in the simple joys of life and in the cultivation of our virtues. Another Stoic philosopher, Epictetus, echoes this sentiment. He taught us that wealth consists not in having great possessions, but in having few wants. This doesn't mean that we should live a life of deprivation. Instead, it's a call to examine our desires, to distinguish between what we need and what we want. It's an invitation to live a life defined not by what we own, but by the virtues we cultivate within ourselves. True wealth, according to the Stoics, is about living in accordance with nature's laws. It's about understanding our place in the world, about recognizing that we are all interconnected. It's about appreciating the beauty of the world around us and finding contentment in the simple pleasures that life has to offer. So, how do we attain this true wealth? It begins with what the Stoics called the discipline of ascent. This means that we must take responsibility for our judgments of what is good or bad. We must understand that wealth itself is not inherently virtuous or vicious. It's our desires and aversions that can lead us astray. The discipline of ascent is about recognizing that our happiness and our sense of wealth don't come from external possessions, but from the virtues we cultivate within ourselves. It's about understanding that true wealth is about the richness of our character, the depth of our wisdom, and the tranquility of our mind. The discipline of ascent is the first step towards this enlightened perception of wealth. The Stoics believed that we alone are responsible for our judgments of what is good or bad. This profound wisdom forms the cornerstone of the discipline of ascent, an integral part of Stoic philosophy. It serves as a guide to discern what is truly necessary in our lives and what is merely superfluous. Imagine being at a crossroads. One path leads towards a life of simplicity and frugality, while the other towards a life of excess. The Stoics urge us to take the former. But why? Because it is in this path that we learn to negotiate with ourselves, to question our wants and needs, and ultimately to understand that wealth is not an end in itself, but a tool that can either serve us or enslave us. Frugality isn't about deprivation. It's about appreciating the simple pleasures in life. It's about enjoying a good book, a conversation with a friend, or a walk in the park. These are the moments that truly enrich our lives, not the fleeting thrill of a new purchase or the temporary satisfaction of indulgence. Simplicity, on the other hand, is about clearing the clutter, both physical and mental. It's about making space for what truly matters. When we simplify our lives, we are not just removing unnecessary possessions, but also unnecessary desires and fears. We are freeing ourselves from the shackles of materialism and opening our minds to the beauty of the present moment. And yet, the discipline of ascent is not about renouncing all material possessions. It's about understanding their true value and role in our lives. It's about not allowing our happiness to be contingent on them. It's about reigning in our desires and not letting them control us. This discipline is not an easy path. It requires constant vigilance and self-awareness. We must constantly question our judgments and desires and not be swayed by societal pressures or norms. But the rewards are worth the effort. For when we appreciate the simple pleasures and rein in our desires, we gain true freedom. Appreciating simple pleasures and reining in our desires is the first step towards financial independence. The discipline of ascent teaches us that the path to prudent riches is not about amassing wealth, but about mastering ourselves. While the Stoics cautioned against excessive materialism, they did not disdain productive endeavors. This guiding principle leads us to the Stoic entrepreneurial ethos, an approach to commerce that is as relevant today as it was in the bustling marketplaces of ancient Rome and Athens. 
the Stoics saw industry and innovation as natural expressions of human creativity, in sync with nature's rational order. They celebrated the fruits of honest, diligent labor and the creation of goods and services that served a real need in society. The entrepreneur, in the Stoic view, is a citizen of the world who contributes to the common good through their business activities. However, this is not a call for unchecked capitalism. Stoic entrepreneurs are guided by the cardinal virtues. Wisdom, for instance, is used to identify opportunities that add real value to society, not just those that pad the bottom line. Courage is required to venture into the unknown, to take calculated risks, and to face the inevitable setbacks along the way. Justice is equally important in the Stoic entrepreneurial ethos. This means dealing fairly with all stakeholders, employees, customers, suppliers, and the wider community. Profit is not the sole aim of business, but a byproduct of providing a valuable service. Temperance, the fourth cardinal virtue, is a safeguard against the lure of excessive profit and the temptation to exploit others. The stoic entrepreneur resists these impulses, preferring to build a sustainable business that respects the dignity and worth of all involved. The stoic entrepreneurial ethos, then, is a call to conscious capitalism. It's a balance of creating value, acting with integrity, and maintaining a sense of restraint. It's about recognizing that business, at its best, is a form of service, a way to contribute to society and to improve the lives of others. Ethical entrepreneurship and virtuous wealth creation are not mutually exclusive, but rather reinforcing endeavors. By adhering to the stoic entrepreneurial ethos, you can build a business that is not just successful, but also meaningful, ethical, and truly beneficial to society. Even as we strive for prosperity, the Stoics remind us that all external goods are inherently impermanent. This is a fundamental principle that we need to grasp. The ebb and flow of fortune's tide is unpredictable, and no matter how hard we try to control it, the waves of life may carry away our amassed wealth in an instant. Seneca, an influential Stoic philosopher, wrote, of no good thing can the eternal possession be certain to any man. This is a sobering reminder that all our worldly possessions, whether it is wealth, health, status, or even life itself, are transient and subject to change. We are not immune to the whims of fate, and we mustn't delude ourselves into thinking otherwise. But this should not lead us towards despair or apathy. Rather, it should inspire us to invest in the one asset that is truly ours and can never be taken away, our inner resources. Our wisdom, our tranquility, our virtue, these are the true riches we should strive to accumulate. They are the fortress that stands unbroken, even when the storms of misfortune batter against its walls. Remember, a Stoic sees financial assets not as ends unto themselves, but as potential means to cultivate reason, serenity, and service to humanity. The Stoics encourage us to view wealth as a tool, not a goal. It's a means to an end, not the end itself. A tool that can help us live according to nature's laws, contribute to the betterment of society, and lead a life of profound equanimity. In the grand scheme of things, superfluous riches beyond life's essentials serve little purpose. They do nothing but inflate our pride and avarice, leading us astray from the path of wisdom. As we accumulate wealth, we must strive to keep our profligate desires in check, focusing instead on the cultivation of our inner resources. So, as we navigate through life's unpredictable waves, let's remember the Stoics' wisdom. Let's strive to build our inner fortress, to cultivate our reason, our tranquility, our virtue. Because in the end, these are the only true riches that remain ours, come what may. A Stoic sees financial assets not as ends unto themselves, but as potential means to cultivate reason, serenity, and service to humanity. True freedom, according to the Stoics, lies not in material wealth, but in being unmoved by externals. This is the essence of the unencumbered life, the life of tranquility that is the ultimate goal of Stoic philosophy. In the grand tapestry of existence, we are but fleeting threads, our lives a transient whisper in the endless symphony of time. Recognizing this, the Stoics urged us to shed the encumbrances that weigh us down, the misguided desires and judgments that bind us to a treadmill of endless striving. The Stoics taught that we are often enslaved by our own desires, chained by the pursuit of wealth, status, and material possessions. But these are externals, things outside our control, subject to the whims of fortune. 
They are not, as we often mistake them to be, the source of our happiness or our worth. Instead, the Stoics call us to focus on what is truly within our control, our own thoughts, judgments, and reactions. By cultivating an equanimous mind, we can navigate life's storms with serenity, unswayed by the vicissitudes of fate. This is the true path to freedom, the unencumbered life of the Stoic sage. But what does this look like in practice? It begins with a simple shift in perspective. Instead of viewing wealth and possessions as ends in themselves, we see them as tools, as means to live in accordance with nature's laws. We learn to value the essential over the superfluous, the enduring over the ephemeral, the internal over the external. We learn to let go of our attachment to material wealth, to view it with indifference. We learn to see through the illusion of permanence, to accept the impermanence of all things with grace and tranquility. We learn to live in the present moment, mindful of life's fleeting nature, savoring its beauty without clinging to it. And in this way, we find the ultimate freedom, the freedom to live in harmony with the natural world, unburdened by misguided desires and judgments. We find the true wealth of the unencumbered life, the wealth that cannot be taken away, that is not subject to fortune's fickle whims. To the enlightened Stoic, the ultimate wealth is the freedom to live in accordance with nature's laws, unburdened by misguided desires and judgments.